Hey guys, it's Mickey and welcome to my long-awaited Empire video. <laughs> if you're tuning into my channel for the first time, hi, my name's Michaela. I'm a first year uni student. I'm studying performance and media and I've been making YouTube videos for a very long time. There's a lot on my channel, a lot of different kind of content, mostly vlogs. This is the first time I've ever done a video like this. I am a massive nerd and I've talked about Dungeons and Dragons and things like that in my previous videos. In my very previous videos I went to like fan cons and conventions and stuff but I haven't done that in a while so um hi <laughs> please feel free to stick around I'm hoping to make more Empire videos I'm hoping to make one every summit that I go to and more lot videos in the future when I start expanding my horizons and going to more events so for those who have been watching my channel or for those who are tuning in and don't know who I or LARP is are don't know who I am or what LARP is either uh, I'm going to give you a brief introduction. <laughs> so LARP stands for Live Action Roleplay and it's a bit like... How on earth do people describe it? There's a lot of really good videos on the internet that better describe what LARP is, but for a quick summary version, it's essentially like... a event <laughs> where you go out and you roleplay as a character, there's a game with rules and gaming mechanics and it's a lot of role play and sometimes combat. It really depends on the LARP you go to. I'm explaining this terribly. Empire is a festival type LARP, so you spend about three days camping in a massive field. Um, it's sort of low fantasy, um, I wouldn't say medieval vibes. I don't really know what to, because it's not quite like Game of Thrones or like Lord of the Rings level of fantasy, but it's not quite medieval modern times either. It's like a nice little in-between of that. In the game of Empire, there are nine nations who every summit meet in Anvil, so this is where the LARP takes place. Um, each nation has their own camp. I've just realized how much there is to explain that I probably should have written more notes. I have notes, probably should have written more about it. And there's honestly so much to the world of Empire, so I'm sort of going to be talking about more of my experience than explaining the lore or the game mechanics and things like that. I will put links in the description, in cards, and a video. I'll put links to videos that explain the game Empire more depth that talk about the lore more in depth, that talk about just LARP as a general um, event hobby on its own more in depth. I'll put those everywhere. I'm not well equipped enough to go that deep into them. So I went to Empire during E1, so that was the Winter Summit. There's four games every year, and the April game is called the Winter Summit in the world of Empire. Obviously it's spring but you know, in Empire it's winter. My nation that I was a part of was Navari, which is why I look like this. I probably should have addressed that first. So uh, I'm dressed as my character Bryn. She is part of the Navari, and Navari often have markings like this. Again, there's a lot of detail as to why and what they signify. There is a wonderful wiki with all the information as to why, and there are other people who hopefully I'll put all the links down as to why, because I don't have the time to go into all the lore. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just so I'm just gonna jump right into sort of my um, thoughts before game and sort of my experience doing this as a broadcast student, a first time LARPer, going on my own without a group of friends. It was terrifying, but also the best experience of my entire life. So basically before I went to this event, I was like really stressed. I was running around trying to find appropriate gear because again, broadcast student, I was hitting a lot of charity shops. I was looking at cheapest options on Amazon. I was really just like trying to pay the bare minimum because the event ticket itself was already pretty pricey. You don't really want to spend too much money on gear, especially if it's your first time because you might not know if you want to go back. So me personally, I did not invest in like big, amazing gear. I literally found this at the charity shop. I got these gauntlets from Amazon for like 11 pound. This dress I've had, this dress, this skirt I've had for a very long time. I got it off Vinted, the app. Like really everything I had was like charity shop hella cheap like you just need to keep looking for cheaper options um 
also a plus. Navari is, in my opinion, the easiest nation to make a costume for. So, like, extra points if you go as a Navari for your first time LARPing. What also really helped is when I did get to the event, loads of people had extra gear and they were more than happy to let me borrow it for the day. They were so sweet. If any of my Navari striding or the people I lose camping with are watching this video, you guys are literally heroes like I love you so much thank you for everything you supplied me with and offered to, to help me with like you guys are just amazing you made my event so special because people really do just want to help you during Empire they really like it's such a welcoming community I was terrified of it when I first joined I, I, I joined uh, Facebook groups definitely do that definitely join the Facebook groups join the general one join the one for the nation you want to join just get on Facebook, talk to people, put yourself out there, talk to people online before you meet them in person at the game. It makes things so much easier than someone can come help you and find you, especially if you're going alone like me. I found people to camp with who were my age, who were experienced and new, so it was a real group of people who also didn't know what they're doing and some who definitely did. So for me, that was the biggest help, was finding people. I mean, I can't say this for everyone, but they let me use their tent. I slept in the out of character area because I just felt sleeping in character would be a bit overwhelming for my, my first time. But they let me use their tent and it was like so amazing. I was fully planning on buying my own, um, but they let me use their tent, which was amazing and a massive help, especially when traveling. So yes, I'm gonna go into the camping a little bit and then I'll go into my character and just some of the stuff that happened at this event. So again for camping, I slept in the out of character area where you can have regular camping tents and your car can be parked nearby and everything that you'd want. The in character sleeping arrangements are a little more tricky. You tend to need a bell tent and you need to have a lot of things that, that make your camp seem more immersive and part of the world. So for me, I wanted to sleep out of character because it seemed like a lot for my first time. Uh, I slept right near some toilets, so that was great. There are a lot of toilets around the campsite, a lot of access. Uh, the time I went, there was no running water though, so it will be a lot of hand sanitizing or having to wait until you find the nearest outdoor tap. There was drinking water, there was absolutely drinking water, that was fine. Just for things like showering, apparently there were showers, I couldn't find them. I just got baby wipes and wiped myself every morning, you know, French shower. Um, and it's only for three days, so if you are like okay with camping and roughing it, it's really not that bad. Uh, if you are a person who needs their creature comforts, there are hotels and bed and breakfasts nearby that you could stay at and then come to the event when it, when time in starts and things like that. That's totally an option as well. For me, I was completely fine with roughing it up for a couple of days. For the food, I ended up getting a meal ticket. There is a out of character slash in character, um, what would I call it? A pub? Restaurant? Food stand? I don't know. There's a place called Moorish who make the best burgers on the planet, oh my goodness. There's a place called Moorish where you can get food and the food is great. I paid £45 for a meal ticket and that covers seven meals, which was great. I didn't even use all my meals up. So I have like two extra meals for the next event, which is great. You get a ticket, they punch it for you. It's great. You get to choose out of a lot of different meals. There are vegan and vegetarian options. There are food allergy options. They're amazing, the catering is amazing. There's also other places, there's in-game places where you can get like sandwiches and tea and biscuits and things like that. There's also more out of character shopping vendors, but you t tend to just pay for those as a whole. At Moorish, also you don't need the meal ticket, you can just pay for the meal individually. I personally found the meal ticket was great. One of my knots for the event was how cold it was during the game. So obviously it was in April, so the days were all right, but the nights were freezing. Thank goodness that um, my camp, the people I was camping with, had extra layers. They gave me this amazing poncho to borrow, which was like, I love this poncho so much, it kept me so warm. <laughs> but um, I would definitely, don't do what I did, which is not bring enough layers. Obviously, if you're going to one of the summer events, you should be okay, but if you're going to the September or the April game, I would definitely suggest layers, an under layer, this one, a poncho, an in-character jacket. They're hard to find, I know. I couldn't find any out of character, in character, sorry, I'm getting confused. I couldn't find any in character um, clothing layered options, which is why I was so cold. I wore a t-shirt under this for most of it, and then I had like armor on top for when I was fighting and things like that. But invest in a poncho, invest in just thicker clothes, 
you'll probably be okay for summer. I don't know how that's gonna go. I'm going to the next summit, but I, I don't know how hard it's gonna be yet. So, but definitely if you're going to the winter September games, layer up. Again, there's a lot of links to a lot of videos with a lot more information and help. Um, but these are just the general things I wanted to go to about camp, go through about camp. Now I'm going to get into the more in-game stuff. So my character Bryn is a Navari Vine, so that means she's part of the physic like faction, and the physics are the sort of in-game medics. So Bryn is a Navari physic essentially, or at least in training. Let me get my little props. She can't actually see my whole outfit, which is a shame. This, there we go, now you can see it. This little sash here on my belt uh, means that I'm a physic, so that people in battles and skirmishes know that they can come up to me uh, for help. <laughs> Even though I'm not very helpful at the moment, there was a moment where Bryn was healing her first patient on the battlefield and this all came out of nowhere and impaled him through the back and she was kind of just staring as he died in front of her and she froze and couldn't do anything about it. So I'm not the best physic, but I'm getting there. <laughs> My original plan for Brain was she was going to be, uh, in like the D&D &D sense, she was going to be uh, neutral lawful, lawful neutral. So I had this idea that she was gonna be this really sweet and like kind of shy, but like really, uh, oh, what's the word? I don't know, just like, ordered and like about honor but also like really sweet and kind and then about an hour into time in on the friday i immediately went no i have to be chaotic good i'm always chaotic good <laughs> i don't know how i thought i was gonna play a lawful character she immediately was like yeah i'm gonna make a harem and a polyamorous cult and now i have seven like husbands and it's going great so how the LARP works is that there's time in and time out. So basically on the Friday, the timing was at six o'clock in the evening um, and you'd role play right up until 1 a.m. And then the next day, I think it was from 10 o'clock in the morning until 1 p.m. And then for the final day, it was like 10 to three. Um, honestly, one of my worries was that I would get so tired from like role playing and running around. First of all, Time flies so fast, it is so enjoyable, it is great. I had a really good time doing that and I didn't really mind like how long I had to stay in character for, but they absolutely were out of character er areas that I could just go to and chill for a bit if I needed to catch my breath, drink some water, don't do what I did. I didn't drink enough water. I didn't bring water with me into battle even though everyone literally told me to. I thought I'll drink a lot of water before and then a lot of water afterwards. I'll be fine. No, invest in a belt that you can put a tankard or some kind of in-game character flask on. Also, honestly, if you don't have an in-character water bottle, people don't care that much. I thought they would, which is why I didn't bring my water bottle with me onto the battlefield because I couldn't find an in-character one. It was just my usual uh, yellow one people don't care they just want you to be hydrated <laughs> so just do it it's like glasses um, seeing glasses no one cares that you're wearing them they can look modern as hell it's your glasses you need to see it's fine if you need some kind of modern thing to aid you no one cares it's not that deep so don't worry about things like that like oh I can't find this so I can't do it like it's People just want you to have a good time and be healthy. It's what matters most. So no one's gonna care if you bring it out of character. I swear someone had a Dora the Explorer water bottle on the battlefield, like no one cares. It's all about staying hydrated. Speaking of battles, I feel like I should explain that just a little bit before I go into some more character stuff. Um, so battles are like, they tend to last about an hour and a half or two hours. They're big fights. <laughs> between like two or three nations and then the monsters. So the monsters are called the Yodin and there's a whole history on why we don't like him and why we're fighting them and things. Um, and in a battle, there's typically loads of people and they last ages and there's one every day. So if you fight in a battle, that usually means you have to monster in the second battle, which is great. It's so cool. <laughs> I did some monstering as well, it was amazing. I just played like a um, slave slash deserter who had joined the Odin, because the Odin are typically orcs. Um, 
so I got to really just run out there and not be scared of getting hit because if Bryn got hit, Bryn's probably gonna die and that's it, I've lost her. But this random NPC monster was like, yep, yeah, I'm gonna risk it all. I did not die. I actually really wanted to. I wanted a dramatic character death. But no. I always got healed in time. I was like, stop healing me, let me die. So there, again, there are more videos and more things explaining how battles work. Also, when you show up to Empire, there are meetings on the first day go to them they explain skirmishes battles the game bleeding out everything there's a meeting there's an lgbtq meeting where they talk about gender and sexuality within empire and what's acceptable and what's not they talk about diversity and things like homophobia and racism and sexism how it's not tolerated there are so many meetings on the first day go to all of them they are so helpful and they explain everyone is so happy to explain there's a little thing that new people say where they say sorry i'm new to anvil could you elaborate more on that and people will stop and they will explain it to you so you can absolutely enter empire knowing nothing you should probably know a little bit it will help because then you can spend more time role playing and having fun and less time asking questions but you can absolutely not know what the hell you're doing and people will kindly explain it to you but yes, skirmishes, there's also skirmishes which are smaller than battles and they're like little mini missions you can go on throughout the day. Uh, different skirmishes have different stakes, like night skirmishes are hella dangerous. Not dangerous in the sense that you're actually gonna get hurt, but dangerous in the sense that your character might come back dead from it. And in Empire, once your character's dead, your character's dead, you gotta come back as a different character. If it's like during the morning of the second day that your character dies you're then terminal for the rest of the game so you do get to continue to role play your character just next event you'll have to come as someone else and you can just base that character entirely on your old character and just change your name from jim to lim it's fine but it's more fun to sort of come back with an entirely new character so during the battle i was running around like a headless chicken trying to heal people trying to figure out where I was needed. It was terrifying and the best adrenaline, adrenaline rush of my life. So here's my little patch of like herbs and stuff. So as a physic, I was using a lot of bandages. I have many bandages. Some say too many bandages. And you get little herbs and the herbs are, they look like this and they do different things. So this one is Imperial, I can't talk. This one is Imperial Rose Wield. Can only be applied by a character with a physics skill. Using 10 seconds of appropriate role playing, the physic can remove the venom condition from a target. Venom is an in-game uh, poison, usually from um, the Valorn, which are like these giant tree zombies, they're terrifying. I wasn't sure how much costuming and effort people were gonna go into making the monsters. They go all out. They are terrifying. As are the orcs. Amazing, honestly. So yeah, that was my job essentially. I would cower behind my friend Talk with a massive shield, my friend Percy with a massive sword, and I would just follow around my other physic friends as they knew what they were doing and they were doing a great job cracking in bones, not really, and sewing up wounds, not really. And I was there like, yeah, keep up the good work and trying not to get stabbed. So a goal for the next day game is to definitely actually be useful. That would be great. Another favorite part of this event was where there was a dawn wedding. So Dawn of the Nation, they're all about like love and honor and courage and things like that. Um, their weddings are crazy. There was a guy, he had to take this goblet of wine all the way to his lover because he proposed to her and needed to prove his love to her. And all the rest of us got to try and stop him as violently as possible. It was great. So many people got more injured during the Dawn wedding than the actual skirmishes. It was insane. Um, and that was, he did make it to her. And they did get married, and it was very in, in character. In character, it was very sweet. Um, I had to heal a lot of people, though. So if we could have less love in the empire, I would then need to buy less bandages. So. I've realized this video is such a mess because I can't quite keep track of what to talk about and how in depth to talk about things so I'll probably have to make a couple of other videos maybe going more into depth about my character and what we did and things like that and my hopes for the next game um, because there's honestly just a lot to cover and I don't think I've covered enough of anything. When the final event ended I had such like ugh, lop come down Honestly, the next three days I was dehydrated and depressed because it was like, cool, I just experienced all that fun stuff and now I've got to go back to normal life. Also severely dehydrated, drink water. <laughs>
all the time. If you think you've drank enough, no, you haven't. Keep drinking. Yeah, honestly, the game as a whole was incredible. If you have any questions, because I know I didn't answer enough stuff or go into enough depth, please leave them like in the comments. I'm gonna try and make another video of this, maybe just talking about my character and like her character relations and things like that. Also, this is a really dressed down version of Brynn. I fully intend to upgrade her costume for the next game. Also, the problem with Navari makeup is every day I have a different marking because I can never replicate it. <laughs> see me with lots of different face designs. I just, just know it's Brynn. It's fine. Another thing, oh my gosh, if you're playing Empire and you're not in Navari, in the evenings, come to Songs and Stories in the Navari camp. It is so magical. People sit around a fire and they tell jokes and they sing songs and they tell tales and they reenact things. It's the funniest and like most emotional part of the game. Everyone just huddle around and, and all sharing in this like Navari battle spirit. It's great, honestly. <laughs> so yes, basically if you are interested in LARP and have never tried it and you live in the United Kingdom, I almost said the United States, and you, I mean there's plenty of LARPs in the United States, but I wouldn't know anything about them. I don't even know about the other LARPs in the UK, only Empire. Uh, Empire is massive. Again, it's a three day event and it's a very deep world. Um, and there's a lot you need to absorb so I would say take a few weeks, months to really look into it, watch as many videos as you can. Again, go onto the Facebook forms, find them, read people's experience and advice, talk to people, ask so many questions. You're not annoying, the LOP community love to help, we love having new people joining us. From my experience, everyone was so lovely and friendly and kind. I don't think I had a bad experience at Empire. The only things I didn't enjoy were the cold and the dehydration. Everything else was great, I had an amazing event, and there's still so much I could talk about. So again, if you like this video, I will make more lot videos, I'm definitely going to make a video about everything that Bryn's going to get up to at the Summer Summit and things. I can talk more in depth about like my friends' characters, I'll have to get permission from them first. Just if you want more LARP content, let me know. If you think I'm a massive nerd and this is cringe, don't let me know because I will cry because I have very low self-esteem. Thanks. I'm gonna leave it there for today. I am not looking forward to editing this because I've gotta figure out flipping everything. But yes, sorry about how chaotic this was. Sorry about how possibly unhelpful it was because I just sort of spoke about everything but also nothing at the same time. Again, hoping to make more content like this. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.